Hey guys, Rob Skiba here for another testingtheglobe.com video presentation. I recently decided to retrace my steps and go back and look at some of the things that got me initially questioning the shape and nature of our world and the cosmos and what uh, and how I started my journey into testing the globe. And one of the first images that I saw when I did my initial research was from this web page right here, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory website. The URL is at the top here, photojournal.jpl.nasa.gov forward slash catalog forward slash PIA, all in caps, 0014. And this shows a still image allegedly taken by the Galileo Space Probe. And this shows a video right here, which you can right click, save link as. And uh, that's this file right here. So I'll go ahead and do it again. Save it again. Yeah, you want to place it. Okay, so, and you click on that to open it, and this is what you get. And this is a very small and low-res video. Uh, and when you look at it, you're like, wow. Okay, this is supposedly the Galileo space probe at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on December 11th, 1990, when the spacecraft was about 1.3 million miles away from the planet. This is a time lapse representing about 25 hours of rotation. So just over a day. See, it says motion picture showing a 25 hour period of Earth's rotation and atmospheric dynamics. I'm not really seeing any atmospheric dynamics. I see what appears to be a blue marble with clouds on it, but I don't perceive any motion in the clouds. And that's the first thing that caught my attention in the beginning of my journey was like, wait a minute, none of the clouds are moving. I could take my camera outside and point it at the sky for an hour and speed it up, you know, later. And the clouds are going to be doing all kinds of stuff. But on December 11th, 1990, in 25 hours, it doesn't appear the clouds are doing anything. Now I had to hunt around for a larger version of this, a better, higher resolution version of this. I don't remember where I found it, but I did eventually find a, uh, a bigger video, higher resolution. And this is that video right here. So you can see it's uh, HD, uh, much crisper. I actually added a little bit of sharpening to it to uh, make everything stand out even more. And um, so we'll look at it again. And so one of my questions is, were they even capable of producing an image like this and beaming it back to Earth from 1.3 million miles away back in 1990? That I, maybe so, I don't know, but it seems suspicious to me. But again, none of the clouds appear to be moving. You know, if you pick, pick a region to look at and, uh, you know, I don't see the clouds changing at all. They seem to be, just be following the ball as it rotates. So that's what initially got me questioning everything. And the other thing is, if this is a space probe flying away from the Earth, how is that working in this scenario right here? where we're supposedly in a solar system with the sun racing through the universe at uh, over a half a million miles per hour, how is the space probe keeping up? You might say gravity is uh, taking the space probe along for the ride, but I'm having a hard time with that. I don't really buy that argument. You know, it's okay if you do, but I just, I, I have a hard time believing that if the solar system is whipping through the galaxy at over a half a million miles per hour, how the heck is the Galileo space probe keeping up with everything and keeping a nice steady shot of the earth? That just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, but then as I started looking at this video a little closer, I saw that there is, they at least took the time, made, they at least made the effort to show um, the Earth getting smaller as the probe is allegedly going away from the Earth. So, you know, one picture is larger than the other. It does have the appearance of getting smaller, uh, certainly, as the video plays. And so let me enlarge the last frame of the video. And if you superimpose the last frame over the first frame, you will see the clouds do change. Last frame, first frame, last frame, first frame, last frame, first frame, last frame, first frame, last frame, first frame et cetera. So, okay. At least in two frames, the clouds did change. But if this is just artwork, animation, well, it's easy for me to understand, you know, if it's, it's a time lapse, it's still pictures, how you can change the clouds for, you know, one frame over another. 
Um, so then I decided to digitally zoom in as the camera is allegedly pulling away so that the Earth stays roughly the same size. So I'm zooming in as it's allegedly zooming away. So it, it gives us the illusion of it not changing its size. Now, look at this animation right here, and I'm going to call it an animation because that's what I believe it is. This is from 2011. This is supposedly a 4K video uh, taken by the Electro-L weather satellite. Notice anything different? Now, along the same lines, how is this geostationary satellite keeping a perfectly stable shot of the Earth at about a million miles away, enduring all the radiation that's out there, uh, while the solar system is allegedly shooting through space at over 500,000 miles per hour. How is this keeping a perfectly stable shot of the Earth? Uh, I don't know. But looking at them both side by side, both represent a day. Notice anything different? But the only thing I'm noticing is better CGI. <laughs> this, is the re this represents over 20 years of advancement in CGI technology. And this image here on the left proves it. This is 100% CGI and admitted to be such. It is a ball with cloud dynamics mapped on it, CGI. And I found that as a result of somebody sending me this right here, trying to pass this off as, see, Rob, the Earth's in rotation with the clouds moving. So, you know, you can stop saying the clouds don't move. And I'm like, first of all, I'm like, if you can't tell this is CGI, you know, I don't know what, what to do. I don't know. I, you know, I can't really help you. But I, I said, I saw right here, it says the source was this website right there. So I clicked on that and that took me here to this geophysical fluid dynamics laboratory website. And if you scroll down here, the two links you want to pay attention to is the hurricanes one and this uh, meso meso scale dynamics. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Uh, those two links. So we'll look at the hurricanes one first. That's this page right here. And if you click on this MP4 file, it brings up this video right here, which shows a flat map with dynamic clouds doing all kinds of interesting stuff right here. But this is 100% CGI. And care to guess what might happen if you map this onto a 3D sphere? Well, you'll end up with something like what's on this page right here. This was that other link that I showed you. Visualizations. And they got a bunch of them here that you can check out. But it's this first one right here that I clicked on. If you click on this file right here, you can click on this file right here, MP4, 1080p. And this shows a 3D ball with the dynamic clouds mapped onto it. Again, this is 100% CGI and admitted to be such. Pretty impressive, though. And in, in, in terms of what CGI, what's going on here with CGI, there's actually you know, quite a bit of interesting technology taking place here, represented here. All right, so this is CGI and admitted to be such. And if I put the two side by side again, yeah, I'm not seeing much of a difference. Actually, I think the coloring on the... Uh, admitted CGI is actually better than the one that's allegedly real. <laughs> it looks, you know, the coloring of the continents and stuff look more realistic to me. And then we come to this one right here. This is from August 5th, 2015. From a million miles away, NASA camera shows moon crossing face of the earth. This is, I guess, the epic camera or something like that. Discover satellite. says, this animation features actual satellite images of the far side of the moon illuminated by the sun as it crosses between the Discover spacecraft epic camera. So I downloaded that video, and I have it here in my video software. And I call this the Bozo Earth because that's exactly what it looks like, like some kind of Bozo clown, especially like a freeze frame right here. So you got like an eyeball here with a long... Eyebrow, bozo nose, and sad frown face. There's a lot wrong with this picture. Uh, I know a lot of people have covered this in the past. But what you can see right here is the edge of the camera lens, I guess. 
so it's sort of like got what I would imagine something around the equivalent of a looking through a toilet paper tube or something as far as field of view goes. Um, again, there's no cloud movement. There's no per perception of any clouds moving here. I don't see any movement in any clouds. They're just rotating with the earth. I don't see clouds changing shape. But the moon looks really wonky, and this image doesn't look like what it should in any normal camera. If the moon is between the Earth and the sun, as this claims to be, then the so-called dark side of the moon should be really bright. We only, we only call it the dark side of the moon because we never see it. We see the bright side of the moon, you know, from our perspective, the same side of the moon facing us all the time. But the whole moon is uniform in consistency, supposedly. Now, this is the this is a CGI representation of the satellite, as they always are, CGI. We never actually see a satellite. We just see artist renditions of the satellite. So this is supposedly, you know, th so this is an artist representation of the satellite staring at the earth. Now this is a million miles away in what they call, I think it's Lagrange or something like that, L1. How the heck is this satellite sitting there stationary, looking through a toilet paper tube, looking at the earth, keeping it perfectly in the frame with the solar system doing this? Again, I don't get that. How is that happening? How is this thing compensating for all of the motion that is supposedly taking place with our solar system trailing along the sun in a vortex through the Milky Way galaxy? How does that make sense to anybody? Second of all, we're told that there's this thing out there called the Van Allen radiation belt. And that supposedly protects the Earth from harmful radiation blasts coming from the sun. You see pictures like this. Solar wind, bow shockwave, Van Allen radiation belt. So, you know, we supposedly have this blast of solar wind radiation slamming into the Earth, causing some kind of configuration like this in terms of how all that wraps around the Earth as the Earth is supposedly protected by the Van Allen radiation belts that go out to 25,000 miles. So this satellite is right in the middle of the blast wave where it, it has to be unimaginably hot for one thing, constantly sitting there in unprotected sun, blasted by radiation. Well, last time I checked, radiation wreaks havoc with computers and pretty much anything. <laughs> so how is this satellite just sitting there in all that solar wind as the sun's moving through the galaxy at over a half a million miles per hour in this vortex path, looking through a toilet paper tube field of view and keeping a nice, clean, steady shot of the earth like this. I don't know how that's possible, but here we have the earth again with no clouds moving. And here we have a moon popping in, photobombing us. Now, this moon would be, you know, a lot closer to the satellite and it should be way brighter. Th this camera should register some, if it has any kind of an iris in it, unless it's just a fixed iris. Uh, well, if it's a fixed iris, the iris, then this thing should be blown out. This, this should be very bright. It should be a lot brighter. It should probably look something like this. And if it has an iris, it should adjust. There should be some kind of dimming of the Earth behind it uh, if, to keep this, this kind of exposure. So I don't see any evidence of what should happen with a camera when something brighter comes into the frame in the foreground. The other problem is when you look at this moon, it has some very bizarre shadowing on this one side right here. And when you zoom in on it, and we'll do that in a minute, it's got uh, like a green 
edge like it's like a mask or something uh, and there's no three dimension three dimensionality to this it looks like it's just a something moving across the screen that that is two dimensional see the shadow on the right side it never changes going all the way across you would think that due to the angles if it's a 3d object and this is an actual representation and this is an actual photograph of the moon going by then the lighting should change the exposure should change the shadows should change but none of that changes because we've been punked by a bozo so then we have on july 11th 2016 another happy time lapse for us diff this time at a slightly different angle everything's a, a little bit off right here so apparently the satellite has drifted a bit or the earth has or something has because the angles are all different here uh, the transit of the moon is lower again this is by the same spacecraft allegedly so let's bring that into my computer here and once again, I don't see any cloud movement. I don't see those spirals spiraling. And the moon looks exactly the same. We have the same issues with the uh, shadowing on the moon. In fact, it looks exactly the same as in 2015 except just lower on the screen so let's do a couple of screen captures here i'll screen capture this one right here and on this one we'll capture this one right here and I'll bring them into photoshop okay so Here's the one from 2015, and here's the one from 2016. Now I'm going to do uh, select all, a layer, and I'm going to slide this one over to the right here. And bring down some guidelines. And let's select all, copy, paste those over here. It's a little bit bigger than it was in 2016. So let's shrink it down to fit within the guidelines here. And delete this so we can see the other earth behind it and slide it over so we can compare them side by side okay now i'm going to copy the moon on this side Bring it over here. Should be pretty close to the same size. Let me bring the opacity down. I'll zoom in on it a bit. And it's a little bigger, it looks like. And it's slightly rotated also. So I'm going to try to line up these dark spots. And scale it to, it looks about the same. Oh, pretty good. Okay. Drag it over and compare the two. So, let me zoom in. 
See all this green pixelation on this side right here? This appears to me to be a very bad cut and paste job <laughs> of a two dimensional object over what may have been a three dimensional CGI Earth. But this moon does not look real to me in any way, digitally speaking. I mean, there's a lot of artifacting going on right here. And if you compare also the two, you have the same dark kind of indentation right here on this side as you do on here. It's exactly the same on both of them, actually. The, the, the shading on the side is exactly the same. You look at this, look at that, look at this right here, and that right there, this area right here, that right there. One year apart, these images were supposedly taken. And it looks like the contrast is a little darker on the one on the right than the one on the left, but I'm sorry, this just doesn't look real to me. It looks very fake. The, the No clouds moving. Let's go back to the video. No clouds moving. Five hours of rotation. Moon just looks like a cut and paste job of a two-dimensional image. There's no uh, irising up or down, no change in exposure as this, what should be a much brighter object. I can understand it maybe being in this one, not changing so much, but this one is like right across the center of the screen practically. That should be quite a bit brighter than it is and the earth should dim down if the if there was an iris on this camera, or even if it was a fixed image, you should be seeing that, but you don't. So now let's compare the Galileo 1990 with the 2011 space probe on the right, the complete CGI in the bottom left, and the 2015 Bozo Earth. The top left and the bottom right, none of the clouds appear to be moving in any way, shape, or form. Of course, the CGI shows the clouds moving on the lower left, and what I'm going to say is CGI allegedly from a 2015, from a 2011 space probe, the clouds are moving. So what's the deal? Why can't they get it right? Well, because we're dealing with different time periods and we're dealing with different levels of sophistication in CGI technology. Now, here is some footage allegedly shot from a Japanese space probe. Now, this moon it looks somewhat realistic, I suppose. Um, wondering where the stars are. And here comes the Earth popping up here. Again, this does not look realistic to me. I'm sorry, there should be lots of stars out here. This isn't giving the appearance to me of an exposure issue where they always say, well, the, the camera is cranked down, so the exposure, you know, well, actually, there's probably a way I can check that. I can adjust the brightness and the contrast. I mean, if this is HD and it claims to be HD, it supposedly is HD footage. Then when I adjust the and when I adjust the brightness, nah, there's no there's no information on this video. There's no data in here. I should be able to see the Milky Way galaxy back there. I'm adjusting this. There's no information. That is a pitch black background. There's nothing here indicating that this is HD footage of the Earth in space. It should look more like this. So I'm going to call BS on this. Also, this is total CGI, in my opinion. That was November 7, 2007. Now we have also the same satellite, allegedly from April 5th, 2008, almost a year later, Earthrise. Now, this one's interesting to me because the foreground is blown out. This is supposedly, uh, this is the north pole of the moon looking at the Earth, and this is supposedly the south pole. Ooh, look how big the Earth is here. Wait a minute. Hmm, north pole, south pole. Interesting. What I find intriguing about this one though is you see how bright this foreground is that's what you might expect the moon to look like with the sun shining on it but there is an appearance see how it changes as the earth comes in 
if this is a HD camera with an iris on it, an auto iris, it does get darker when the bright earth pops up. So you can see that. So whoever did this CGI took that in, into consideration. And I do believe this is also CGI. And um, same thing, if I were to adjust brightness, contrast, there is no information in this HD footage of any stars in the background. There should be zillions of very bright stars. Even with light pollution here on Earth, we see more stars than we ever see when we see footage like this. And so I decided to take both images and flip the, the one from the south. So you have the one allegedly being shot over the north pole of the moon and this one allegedly being shot over the south pole of the moon. And of course, first thing you notice is the difference in size of the Earth. Significantly different. Now, you might argue that this is zoomed in. And if it if it is with some sort of telephoto lens or something, because the curvature of the moon appears different here than it does here. So you're seeing what looks like more curvature of the moon here, less here. So, okay, you could say it's zoomed in and thus the Earth looks bigger. But to me, this still looks like total CGI. I am just not buying it at all. And so this, among many, many other observations, analyzing video footage and uh, still imagery from NASA, JPL, and other websites, it just doesn't add up. It, there's too many things wrong with it, too many strange anomalies, too many inconsistencies, clouds moving sometimes, clouds not moving other times, never seeing any stars. So that was a huge part of starting my journey into testing what I think I believe about the Earth and its place in the cosmos. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video presentation. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and share it on your favorite social media sites. There's a lot more to come, so stay tuned, and we'll see you back next time.